everybody, welcome to a very juicy live stream where at noon today, noon Eastern Standard Time, Variety chose violence. Or is that clicks? <laughs> With a very explosive article from uh, Tatiana Siegel, by the way, who you might recall uh, was getting into some fights with Ray Fisher. Uh, it was quite the hit piece. Uh, it was surprising to come from a trade. Uh, although keep in mind that all three trades are owned by the same parent company, uh, PMC. Uh, thanks for gifting a membership, Jerome. Uh, but yeah, DC's like, whew, thank goodness it wasn't us. Uh, but I think, you know, DC just isn't doing anything right now. Uh, we're, I'm going to talk down, uh, I'm going to talk, oh, thank you, 80s model, for gifting a membership. Uh, I've, you know, Variety was very funny. So Variety, you know, I think there weren't any huge surprises here. Uh, hey, Josh, I think there was a little more perspective that was given. Uh, and also, I think you're starting to see some people try to jockey for position to protect themselves. And you're starting to see the blame game getting played. That's so nice of you guys to gift memberships. Thank you, Candy Corn. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, but I'm going to really focus right now uh, on... Uh, on these topics so that we can stay on point. And then I'm going to uh, periodically open it up to questions uh, and comments from you, OK? Because there's, there's a lot to digest here. So I don't think there's anything like that's a huge surprise, OK? Um, uh, but I, as I said, I think that the, the, ga the blame game is getting played here. Don't worry, I'm going to discuss all the drama. And I'm going to give you my thoughts on it, OK? So Variety not only uh, put this story out there, OK? Uh, very, very, it's, usually the trades won't do this, uh, which is interesting that they, that they, ch they felt they could do it. Uh, you know, usually they won't, you know, it's, 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 I'm sure that Marvel's not happy about this story being out there, but I think that Marvel also has to realize they've reached a point where it's like the writing's on the wall. It's like the sky is blue. Who are you kidding? Like everybody, everybody knows what's uh, going on. And I think, you know, I saw somebody talk about the fact that, you know, a lot of the criticism of the franchises has been very toxic and has come from, well, has come from toxic spaces. And so people are very reluctant to give any attention to it uh, or any credence to that toxic, because they don't want to reward that toxicity or those toxic individuals. Uh, even though I would say that there is some truth to the criticisms, despite the horrible sources of where they're coming from. So, yeah, I think that's kind of like what's going on. I think we've reached a breaking point where people are like, it's just too broken, we have to acknowledge it. And if only Star Wars had gotten to a similar point. Um, and you're still not seeing it totally. I mean, I think you can see the pieces are all there, but still nobody's willing to put them together uh, because of the toxicity that's in the space, uh, which has hurt the film and entertainment business, just like it's hurt society in just so many ways. Uh, you know, we can't have a situation where you can't criticize something. You certainly should be able to criticize it, but yet now everybody's so worried about being lumped in with, the, that, that, with that toxicity. So I think the, the key is to, to be very careful in, the, in your words and how you explain it and where you're coming from. But, it, you know, it's, it's tough. And I will say that it's very unfortunate when I was putting my poster frame together that this is all projects led around women and characters and talent of color. And that they're running into so many problems on that, and that it's falling apart to such a degree, I think is for two reasons. I think one, Kevin Feige hired the wrong people to adapt it. Uh, I think that these people, like, you know, again, Ryan Coogler did it right. But Ryan Coogler, you know, not everybody's Ryan Coogler. So I think a lot of the talent that he picked, like uh, clearly Jessica Gao, who did She-Hulk, was a horrible idea. Uh, Jack Schaefer, though, worked out very well with WandaVision, even though, uh, you know, she didn't really know what she was doing, but it still worked out. And then the other thing that I would say is that a lot of times people in this space, this is tough. See, I'm going to use, take my own advice. I'm going to offer a criticism, but I'm going to be real careful about it. We were just talking about Rachel Zegler yesterday. And I guess what I would say is that a lot of times you try and you find the loudest voices in these spaces, which is interesting to me because no one's quieter than Ryan Coogler. Do you know what Ryan Coogler's voice sounds like? The guy hardly ever talks to the public, uh, which I think is interesting. But yet he really knows what he's doing. But I think that a lot of the talent 
that really was very vocal about wanting to say, oh, wow, are you doing more diversity, Marvel? Let us handle it. Yeah, that's right. Dest Destin Daniel Cretton, very, very good as well, but also very quiet, very professional. But I think Foggy went and hired a lot of activist talent who did a horrible job. Hey, uh, Claritza, uh, Claritza Bell. And a lot of time, activist talent belongs in the award space. And they don't belong in the blockbuster space. And I think that might be where the problem arose. I think Disney Animation's having a similar problem. I think you need to get, you know, you need to get talent that wants to do, do diversity, but also has strong business sense. And I think almost everybody, that, and I think I've seen some of you say the same thing. Well, you know, why shouldn't people like it? You know, you try and like, as well, JF says it's forced. Well, some people feel, you know, you have to do what's good for you. It's good for society. But in fact, the way entertainment, entertainment has very often been good for society, but entertainment makes the medicine go down well as the sugar. And I think that a lot of people have forgotten the sugar element to entertainment. And they've just been making it medicine. And I think that is a big, big problem here. Uh, and, and, and also that, you know, blockbuster entertainment needs to have a wide net of appeal to warrant its very large budget. So I don't think Ryan Coogler is activist talent, Eric. I think he has, I think Ryan Coogler is, I wouldn't say he's activist. Ryan Coogler, because he hasn't, in, I don't think he ever really injected politics, certainly not modern day politics into any of the Black Panther storylines. I think he talked about timeless commentary on rulers and leaders. And I think what he did with, uh, by making, uh, you know, Namor and Atlant you know, this version of Atlantis, uh, you know, Mesoamerican was slightly political, but I think he does, he's much better at balancing it, much better at balancing it. I don't think that Black Panther is political at all. I think, I think it's, it's very well done. Uh, that's a good comment. Who said that? Frankenstein, F.R. Frankenstein made a good point and said, you know what? The medicine needs to go down with sugar, not vinegar. And I think a lot of people in Hollywood are pouring an awful lot of vinegar. Uh, JC says, funny how this comes out after the Pandaverse, uh, the South Park episode. Yeah, the South Park episode, um, you know, again, I think the South Park situation is, is tough. Because again, I think that that had a little bit too much toxicity to it. You know, I mean, comedy often does, but I think you need to be really careful. I think you cannot say that you don't, hey John, thank you for gifting memberships. I strongly believe that there should be diversity of every kind, gender, ethnicity, and sexuality in these major franchises because that's who's in the fan base. Does every movie need to do that? No. Uh, do you have to make sure that there is appeal to everything still? Yes. I'm very worried about the Wanda show, uh, I mean the, um, the Agatha show, because I think it's going too far in a certain direction. I think the show is, um, we had hoped that it was gonna introduce an incredibly popular and fantastic LGBT character in Wiccan, but from what I've heard, the show is going to be so LGBT that I feel like I'm concerned it's gonna limit its audience. And, you know, and that's not gonna help anybody. So this is where you're, this is the situation that, 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 that comes up. Okay, so let's go through these storylines, okay? Uh, so that's, what, that's what's going on, all right? All right, whew, this is very difficult to talk about. Uh, I don't want to give away spoilers for uh, Agatha, but there will be, I will say, and I know some of you heard it, there will be multiple LGBT characters on that show. Uh, and I even have some friends, you know, I've talked to them about it privately, L friends in the LGBT community, and they're a little nervous with some of the choices that are being made because they're worried about the criticism that it might invite on the show and LGBT characters and the LGBT community, uh, you know, uh, you know, equating witchcraft. Although I think that there is a background, you know, I think there's a positive connection there, but I think doing it with all the characters, I, th I, I think it's, um, I don't know if it's a good idea. And I really want Wiccan to succeed. I'm so, such a fan of Wiccan, and I'm so, I so want that to work out. I'm extremely, extremely nervous about it. And I'm shocked that they would endanger that character. Uh, okay. It makes me wonder if anybody working on the show is LGBT. That's what I worry about. 
All right, let's write Nacho. Let's boop into the picture. This isn't a traditional story. So if you're not watching live, you'll be able to see what we're talking about based on the screen grab. Variety broke, for the most clicks, Variety broke up their story into headlines on the Twitter. And so I screenshotted that to show what we're talking about. So here's the cover story. And that is a very nice illustration. Uh, all the trades have to use, uh, they use cartoonists to do their, their stuff because, you know, you know, parody is allowed. And a Hollywood reporter usually leads the charge on this, doing a great idea. Uh, I feel so bad seeing poor Loki in the middle of all that because the show is so good. Uh, but yeah, that's the lineup of characters. Uh, poor poor uh, Falcon. I loved Falcon's show, even though it was incredibly, uh, well, now he's Captain America. But that was an incredibly political show. But I thought it was done really well. But they're already talking about bringing back... Uh, Captain America, you know, Steve Rogers version, and you're like, Cap 4 hasn't even come out yet. I mean, are you kidding me with this? So, I mean, I'm not happy about that. Uh, but it is a very nice illustration, and you can see all the fans are walking away from them and all the popcorn on the floor. Oh, my God, it's devastating. It's devastating. All right, so let's go through these stories. All right. Here we go. That's right. Where is Wanda, Ricardo? That was really dumb what they did with Wanda. All right, so the first, I think the biggest headline, and I had a poll on this on, on Twitter. You can still vote in it. Polls run for 24 hours on Twitter. Uh, they said that they're like, maybe we should bring back the original Avengers, uh, bringing back Robert Downey Jr. and Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow. Uh, and obviously, I'm sure Steve Rogers is included in that as well. Uh, I think this reeks of desperation, and I would not do it. Uh, I think that especially I heard there's a rumor going around that I haven't been able to confirm that they don't want to do the Thunderbolt story. Uh, maybe they feel they can't possibly compete with Suicide Squad and the boys and Invincible. But uh, Thunderbolts is like one of the only things I was looking forward to. So if they don't do Thunderbolts, I'm going to be pretty upset about it, to be honest with you. But I feel like I wanted to bring back Tony as AI in Armor Wars. That was the path that I saw for that. Uh, what goes on with Captain America? I would someday like to see a show about what his life that he led, you know, when he didn't want to tell the secret. Remember, he was like, mm, I don't think I will. And I was like, great idea. Uh, you know, save that for another day. What was his life like with Peggy? Did they have any kids in another dimension? I would like to see it. Uh, so there's that. Uh, Black Widow, she sacrificed herself. I mean, I know they brought back Gamora, but are they going to bring back everybody who sacrificed himself for the Soul Stone? I mean, I think that's just ridiculous. Uh, and so, I, you know, I just, I feel like, and it would be such an adm admission of defeat and failure. And I saw a number of you in the comments on Twitter say, just pick a new lineup of Avengers and just develop those, that new group through movies and shows. And that's really what they should have done. I think that, uh, you know, as we said when it happened, and I said this, and I think some of you agreed, when Kevin Feige got Fox, he got too many toys in his toy box. He has just too much. He has too much to play with, and he couldn't figure out what to do first. And it's just been a disaster. And it I was excited about a new Avengers lineup. I was very much looking forward to a new Avengers lineup. I don't want to see the former Avengers come back. I do agree with all of you that Secret Wars, I was expecting to see alternate versions of them show up briefly. That is also something that would have been fun. Uh, but why is there no talk of Secret Wars in this entire article? Secret Wars needs to be moved up instead of delayed. Uh, it's like, that's your obvious answer. Bring up Secret Wars. It's going to come right after Deadpool 3. I don't understand why, you know, why we're messing around with this Kang garbage. This Kang tea is very bad. Hey, FC, thanks for gifting a membership. Uh, all right, so, 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 that, so do you guys have any comments about this Avengers or questions about the original Avengers coming back? Then we're going to talk about the other... Don't worry, we're going to talk about Blade. We're going to talk about the other stuff. Does anybody have any quick questions or things about this before we move on to the next one? That's right, Layla. I quite frankly miss Vision as well. <laughs> Hey, Diva Miner. Jay Leo. Uh, I see somebody here, uh, official Liam said, just bring in the X-Men. That's true. They did say in this article that they feel like maybe they should just bring in the X-Men and the Fantastic Four and just like take a break from all these characters. But I don't think that's the way either. And I, I honestly don't trust this creative team right now to do the X-Men and the Fantastic Four. Um, 
Welm says, just how hands-on has Feige been with the MCU since Endgame? That's a good question. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. And then Ixion says, I just want to see Evan Peters in a huge role again. I love him so much. Yeah, poor Evan Peters. We'll see if uh, Quicksilver, uh, because they're doing Fox X-Men, remember. Uh, Let's see. And I agree with you, Josh Zeitler. This phase four and five should have been Secret Invasion. It was right there. That's why I included that at the bottom there, is things that ruined Marvel. Uh, They were really blaming Quantumania uh, in this article, but I feel like Secret Invasion, and you guys voted recently in our, our, our Marvel trivia quiz show, uh, that Thor Love and Thunder, which is what really first made you lose confidence for the first time uh, in the MCU. All right, so let's move on to the next story. I included She-Hulk so early on because I feel like it's, it shows a problem overall. All right? So they said She-Hulk, a single episode of She-Hulk, cost about $25 million. They said dwarfing the budget of the final season episode of Game of Thrones, although... That was, I wouldn't, I don't know if that comparison is so great. I'm like, House of the Dragon, yes. Game of Thrones, not so great. And I'd be curious if every single episode is 25 million or just this first one, which was Hulk and She-Hulk specific. So to me, it isn't the budget that so much is the problem, okay? Because if this was, if these shows were doing like uh, Stranger Things and Wednesday numbers, like Netflix numbers, I think it would be fine. Nobody would be upset about the budget. But I think the situation is, is that they had to redo it. They said that what really caused problems was that this wasn't supposed to come out until the end of the season. But when they watched the episodes, they were like, oh my goodness, this needs to be the first episode. So they moved it up in the production, post-production schedule and there wasn't enough time to do the VFX. And they said that is a huge problem with, uh, with Marvel and that they are doing everything in post. And that was something that was discussed with the recent rebellion in the VFX divisions, right? That every, we'll fix it in post, we'll fix it in post, we'll fix it in post. And that seems to be Kevin Feige, he, Kevin Feige should put that, that's, that's his quite frankly, Kevin Feige should put that on a t-shirt apparently, where he feels he can fix anything with reshoots and VFX. And clearly that is no longer the case. His problems have become too big. And I think he's hiring, I think he's also hiring very cheap talent. You know, they're like, we don't need experienced filmmakers. We'll get this person who's got a lot of heat because of the small thing that they did and level them up to, you know, making huge productions. So that's, that's just disastrous. So yeah, I, I really, and James Gunn has like kind of like cheekily addressed this because he said at DC, we're not going to move ahead with anything until the script is locked. Although, is Superman Legacy locked? I told you, and other scoopers have since confirmed, that the Superman Legacy script focuses on the Middle East, which uh, was a bad idea to begin with, but now is just absolutely nuts, uh, especially with some of the casting choices that they made. So, uh, I, you know, James Gunn's been real quiet the last few weeks. I wonder if James Gunn is furiously rewriting that movie. Uh, I, I think that, you know... Everybody said we wanted a Brainiac movie, and I don't understand why we're not getting it. All right, so that's right, Denzel. Soups, you in danger, girl. Hey, writer boy. Uh, So, yeah, this is very bad. (laughs) I think that entire movie should be scrapped. Uh, All right. I mean, not that, you know, I'm willing to give James Gunn the benefit of the doubt with Superman. I mean, let's see it. But I wouldn't make Superman Legacy based on what I heard about it. And, again, my scoop was confirmed by multiple other scoopers. Okay, let's move on to the next part of this. All right, so let's talk about Kang. Oh, what a disaster. Oh, you know, Jonathan Majors, he's not going to be able to come back. So let's talk about some of the reveals and nuance uh, that were in this article. So one thing is that a a top deal maker who somehow saw the final Loki episode, what? Okay, uh, said that Marvel is effed with the whole Kang angle based on how Loki ends. And I heard how Loki ends. I heard as well. I'm not going to ruin it. Don't worry. But it is extremely Kang-centric. So they really, you know, infinity down, infinity down on Kang. And I agree, you know, do they recast? I got to tell you, I don't think the Kang character is really clicking. I don't think people are like, I like Kang, but if only someone else played him. I think people are like, I think fans don't like Kang for the most part, and I think fans don't really like the multiverse. I think people are like, we had enough of this. We're not interested. But I think that, you know, it's a problem for Loki. But there's more Kang headlines, okay? I have all the Kang headlines together, okay? The next is that CAA apparently 
parted ways with Jonathan Majors before his arrest because of his quote-unquote brutal conduct, conduct towards staff. That's it. Not coming back. Done. That was a very damaging headline uh, and quite shocking. And I'm surprised that CAA, uh, I wonder how long CAA let it go on for. CAA is also on headlines uh, for um, uh, how they treated Julia Ormond with the Me Too situation. Uh, and so uh, like, what did CAA know and how long did they know it uh, when they floated Jonathan Majors to Marvel for the role of Kang? But this is just very, very bad. It's extremely bad. Oh, oh, well, CAA is Creative Artist Agency. It's one of the biggest inter, uh, entertainment talent agencies in the business. So you just can't get, it's not going to be able to come back from this. He's done. He's not, he's not going to come back. I don't know if he's going to, well, we'll see. I mean, if he's guilty, we'll see what his legal situation is if he goes to jail. Uh, but he's not going to be able to come back in the, um, in the entertainment business. Elliot Bullock, brutal conduct means, I don't know if it was physical or if it was just uh, in the way he handled himself, but it means basically abusive towards staff. There's just not, you're, you can't, he's not coming back from that. And, and it lends credence to this story, you know, this, this case. It's, it's, so he wasn't just abusive in his personal relationships, but it seems he was indeed abusive in his professional relationships, which had been alluded to on social media. And so uh, CAA apparently, um, not only did they know about it, but it became too much for them, even though they were making a lot of money off of him. Yeah, Simi, I don't know why Disney doesn't do background checks, although CAA probably would have likely have hid that from them because they wanted to get the money. They wanted to get the deal. It's really bad. Okay, there's more. Then, a studio source notes that regardless of Jonathan Major's legal issues, Marvel already had considered moving away from a Major's lead phase because of the box office performance of Quantumania, which will struggle to make a profit. Now, I don't think that's fair to blame Jonathan Majors. Jonathan Majors trended when Quantumania came out because people felt he was the only good thing in the movie. Now, his, some of his scenes were awful, but I didn't think that was Jonathan Majors' fault. Although, after seeing Loki, as I've said in my coverage, I feel that Jonathan Majors was making creative choices that amused and benefited him, but not the project overall. Uh, Although I thought he had some great moments in Quantumania. But I, I mean, Quantumania has a ton of problems, and I really don't think that it's Jonathan Major's fault. Uh, but that's so, I, I mean, uh, that's interesting, Michael, saying about sources. Uh, that's true. I think that, you know, Marvel had no official comment on this story, but how much of this, you know, we know the trades have a very close relationship with the studios. How much of this is Marvel trying to pivot and maybe lay the blame at people? Is Marvel going to be like, woo, the problem was clearly a Victoria Alonso and uh, Jonathan Majors. Thank goodness we got rid of those people, right? All right, so I think that's the end of, uh, oh, there's one more. Yes, that's right. In the wake of Jonathan Majors' legal troubles, Marvel executives discussed backup plans, including pivoting to another comic book adversary, like Dr. Doom. As I said the other day, I don't know if Dr. Doom's going to play with non-comic book fans. He's a dude in a, in a mask. He's the man in the iron mask with a cape. And he runs an Eastern European country. I mean, they'd have to significantly rework Doom. I don't think he can have a mask, to be honest with you. Maybe he can still have the cape. But he just has to be like an Eastern European dictator, I guess, who does both, myth, both, both magic and science. Eh, yeah, it is Darth Vader. That's very Darth Vader. You're right, Michael. I, I don't know. I, I got to tell you, I, I think Dr. Doom's a really tough sell. I, I just, I don't totally see it. I don't see him being brought in at the last minute. Uh, I honestly would skip Kang and just go straight to Secret Wars and then be done with the multiverse because I am also tired of the multiverse. So that's what I think. Uh, that's what I think they should do. All right. So does anybody, anybody have any questions or comments about Kang and the Jonathan Major situation before we move on to the next cluster F in this article? Marvel's like, all of our dirty laundry is just up for everybody to see. And we're like, we could see it, man. We saw it. Your dirty laundry was hanging out of your pants already. Uh, Miguel says, never cared for Kang, but with Wanda, on the other hand, we went nuts. That's right, but poor decisions. Uh, the character assassination of Wanda. What a shame. 
John says, who do you think the new Thanos Kang level villain should be in the new direction? With X-Men coming, should it be a mutant? It's a tough call, John, because as you might recall, Marvel has always had a villain problem. They've never been able to do anything good with villains. They've either re rehabilitated them or killed them right away. It's always been difficult for them. Uh, Steven says, I think the multiverse would work better if they built it up better and had established rules and it didn't feel like just making things up. Some variants look different and some don't. Yeah, that's true as well. Uh, it's really basically just like the writing tool. They're like, oopsie, multiverse. Whelm says, why not recast Kang, speed run to Secret Wars, and then do something better afterwards? I just think Kang could go away, honestly. That's what I would do. Be like, bye, Kang. Oh, yeah, wasn't Kang a problem? I, I think we just diluted him. Mike says, which MCU movie or show do you think sparked the change in perception of the MCU brand? Well, you guys voted on this last week, and you said you thought it was Thor Love and Thunder. For me, I agree with you, Mike. I th to me, it was Multiverse of Madness. To drop the ball like they did on Wanda, in my opinion, was absolutely shocking. All right, so, uh, and that's right, Mish, to ruin the Gore the God Butcher storyline was also just quite shocking. And to see them do that with Secret Invasion. I think people, have, I think the main problem, which was addressed in this article, was the loss of faith in the Marvel brand, whereas before it stood for quality. Uh, Mr. Magic, I don't know if they're gonna bring back Wanda. Um, at this point, I don't know if she'd wanna come back. Um, and then Big Lee Chu says, how will these comic book franchises keep up with the boys and in Invi Invincible? Uh, I think they're gonna have a really hard time. We'll talk about that as we talk about, I, have my, I was shooting my Gen V breakdown right before this live stream. And I'm going to cover Invincible uh, Season 2, Episode 1 as well. Uh, I think that uh, they have a real problem with those shows. All right, so Mr. Sinister? That's an interesting idea. I don't know. They've really messed up Sinister up in the comics recently. Okay, next, next mess. Blade. Oh, my God. If I were Mahershal Ali, he should just leave. I would leave at this point and go and try and get it. I don't know what franchise isn't in a disastrous shape, but I think... You know, this is clearly not going to work for him. And it's a shame. Remember, this was his Oscar capital. We were like, how's he going to spend his Oscar capital? He just won his second Oscar for Green Book. And he was like, I want to put myself in the MCU. And he called up Kevin Feige and he said, I want to do Blade. And he came out on the stage at Comic-Con and it was so exciting. And it's just been an absolute disaster. So here are some of the reveals. The Blade reboot with Mahershala Ali went through at least five writers, two directors, and one shutdown six weeks before production. Oh, embarrassing, it gets worse. Then one person familiar with the Blade script changes, Blade script changes, says the story at one point morphed into a narrative led by women and filled with life lessons with Mahershala Ali's Blade relegated to the fourth lead. Hey, thanks for gifting a, me a memberships, Americo. I gotta tell you, I really would like to see what female characters do well. I wanna be very supportive of female characters and I'm upset with the toxicity that surrounds them. But even I am like, are you freaking kidding me with trying to make Blade of all movies female centric? Would it still be called Blade? Who would want a female centric movie about MCU vampires with Blade the fourth lead? What that means is that there are three leads above him and who the heck would they be? I can't even think of, I mean, what, like uh, uh, Elsa from, uh, I forgot her name, uh, from Werewolf by Night, because Werewolf by Night sure was a big hit. Nobody even, I mean, they released it in color and everybody was like, oh, this is not very good. <laughs> Which is what I said. It had nice moments, but for the most part, it wasn't, oh yeah, Elsa Bloodstone. It was not particularly good. So that is incredible to be. Uh, Mahershala Ali, when they came to him and said, oh, we've written you out of the script that only exists because of you, he should have just like had a bunch of expletives and left. Uh, and then, uh, let's see here. Then they said, Marvel is reportedly lo still looking to make Blade, <laughs> but they want it for be to be very cheap for under $100 million. Well, obviously it's a vampire story. It doesn't need to be very expensive. I think it should have started out at a under $100 million. Uh, to be honest with you. Uh, but I, I just think this is shocking. I think I, they wanted to give him a daughter too, which I also think was a mistake. Why can't Blade just be Blade? I mean, I think sometimes you have to realize the story that you're telling. And sometimes it is about a dude. And sometimes, sometimes it's about a white dude. And sometimes, you know, you know, it's like, it's just, that's the way it is. And I think that they have to really be, you know, be more 
more on that. But if Mahershala Ali, Oscar winner, uh, you know, and really, if you were looking for someone to bring diversity to the MCU, you would be so thrilled that you got him. If they can't do right by him, what are they doing over there? I mean, they really have to some degree become a parody of themselves. Uh, that's right, Kit Harrington. He he maybe you know Mahershala Ali it rubbed off on him. I mean, what a jinx. All right, so let's go to the next. So anyone have anything about Blade before we talk about the Marvels? Oh, this was so bad. So bad. And I hate to see a female director of color thrown under the bus like this, but then I feel she kind of did it to herself. So we'll talk about this in a moment because it's a doozy. It's one of the worst things to come out of this article. And I feel definitely um, damage control. Anything else? I think you guys are pretty good. Austin says, do you think the director from The Invisible Man could be good for Blade? Oh, he, you know, Lee Wanell? Maybe. You need some, they got to hire people who are good at action sequences because it's just a mess. All right, let's talk about this, art, this headline. I brought it up. You guys can see it. It's pretty bad. So the Marvel's director, Nia DaCosta, began working on another film while the Marvel's was still in post-production. The filmmaker moved to London earlier this year to begin prepping for her Tessa Thompson drama, Hedda. This is just a disaster. I mean, I think this is to answer her saying, you know, recently Nia DaCosta came out and said, I didn't direct my movie. And I think this is Marvel's rebuttal. Marvel said, you walked off your movie, so that's why you didn't direct it. Now, I'll tell you what I think is happening here from both sides, okay? But I do feel that this is going to be really bad um, for Nia DaCosta's career. I think that no matter how bad Nia DaCosta was having, no matter how bad a time that she was having on this production, you don't walk when someone has spent $250 million on the movie. It just makes, I think, other studios and producers too nervous to hire you in the future. Unless Nia DaCosta felt she was never going back to the blockbuster space, which is very possible. All right, so I feel that Nia DaCosta, my take on this, is that Nia DaCosta was like, this movie is bad. And she doesn't feel that it represents her talent. And she's like, this movie is going to hurt her career significantly. She's like, oh my God, I'm going to be the new Chloe Zhao. I think that's maybe what her reaction was. So I think she feels that this Tessa Thompson drama is her new priority because if she can make sure it's far enough along and can't be scrapped when the Marvels hits the fan, she can... Uh, say I already I'm a dramatic director. Marvel messed me up. Here's my other project. So I think that's what Nia DaCosta. I think that's the choice she made. However, you can't walk away. The director is the director of the ship, and even in post, they are supposed to be overseeing everything and making sure everything's okay. So uh, Josh Trank is an interesting comparison, Danny. It does sound a little bit like Josh Trank, although Josh Trank, of course, also had appalling behavior. Uh, but anyway, uh, and also that's true, Matt, uh, Nia DaCosta didn't get a great grade for Candyman either. I mean, she had some amazing visuals, but people overall weren't too happy with that film either. So she's going to be probably zero for two. Uh, but I think you have to go down with the ship. I think when you're w operating at this level, you want people to feel you're a good soldier. And you want producers and studio executives to say, well, at least she stuck with it. And at least she promoted the movie and she stood by it. And so we can feel good about that. Now, is there a chance that she still would have gone down with the ship anyway? Yes. And it's not necessarily fair. But Olivia Wilde is another good comparison, Mar Michael Mark. That's true. Spider-Link, Chloe Zhao stuck with Eternals. But Chloe Zhao caused a lot of problems on set for the Eternals, which I've alluded to to you in the past. All I can say is that, I think I've mentioned it before, Marvel executives had to fly to the set to get people to start talking to each other again. It was that big a disaster, and that was Chloe Zhao's doing. So that's what hurt Chloe Zhao. Um, but with Nia DaCosta, if she could have at least said, hey, I was a professional till the very end, uh, and you know, it's, I'm sad you bring up Patty Jenkins, Nacho, because I feel bad this is happening with all female directors. Because this doesn't help, you know, female directors in the long run. It's very upsetting. Thank goodness for Emma Tammy doing such a good job directing Five Nights at Freddy's. But this is really bad. 
Uh, Olivia Wilde also Rudy caused problems for that film. It was not well received, so that's Olivia Wilde's fault. And then also because of her personal relationship with her actor, she really hurt the film uh, PR-wise. And it just completely blew up in their face by the time they got to Venice. And that's Olivia Wilde's fault for not being more professional. So it's tough. Uh, and you might be damned if you do, damned if you don't. But I think you don't want to give anybody any ammunition against you. And I think walking away from a $250 million movie, leaving the city where it is being worked on to relocate across the pond to another continent is just really, really bad. Uh, and, you know, I think it's going to, Nia DaCosta will lose the right to say that Marvel messed her up because Marvel will counter that she wasn't even there to uh, fix the movie in post. So it's really bad. It's very bad. Okay. But it gets worse for the Marvels. Although I don't see how it can get worse than that. That's really bad. Uh, the next thing is, is that the Marvels is tracking to open between 75 and 80 million, far below the 185 that Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness opened with last year. Uh, I don't think that, I gotta tell you, I think the Marvels is gonna open around 50. I think it's gonna open like around Eternals did. I have to see the movie still, but I gotta tell you, I think this one's a clunker. I think 75 to 80 would actually be fantastic. I'd be thrilled if it opened there. Uh, and I just don't think that it is. Uh, I think most people are going to wait to watch that movie on Disney Plus, if at all. Uh, it has amazing end credit sequences, but unfortunately, I think those are going to leak online almost immediately, as soon as it's playing in any country, which we've seen happen over the past few movies. Uh, and, you know, maybe Disney someday will get on top of that. Uh, but I don't know if they're gonna, I don't know if it's gonna happen. Maybe it'll happen this time. Uh, but people will just describe it. You know, it'll just, it, those will be out there. And again, it's another movie where the end credit scenes are much bigger, from what I've heard, than anything in the actual movie. Uh, where you're like, why didn't you just make that movie? And they're like, uh oh. Uh, we should have, maybe. All right. Uh, then uh, Marvel, which tradition traditionally only solicits feedback from Disney employees and their friends and families, as I've told you, took the, un it's interesting that they're making that more public now, took the uncharacteristic step of holding a public test screening for the Marvels in Texas. Why Texas of all places? If you were going to screen that movie anywhere, it should have been in Portland, Oregon, or someplace like that. I, I'm like, Texas? I guess they wanted to see how it would play in the most combative environment possible. Although Texas is a little more mixed these days. It's more of a purple state, blue and red, but I wouldn't play it in Texas. And, you know, shockingly, it didn't get a good response. So I'm like, oh my goodness, really? Really? Yeah, it didn't get a good response. So uh, that's where they played it. I'm like, you got two TV actors in it. What do you think's going to happen? And Brie Larson, who unfortunately has made herself very unlikable. So it's just, you know, it's not going to do well. And I think, is there one more for that? Yeah. The Marvels needed four weeks of reshoots to bring reference, co to bring coherence to a tangled storyline. How on earth does a movie like that not have a good storyline as soon as it's greenlit? Like, you can tell on the page what a movie's going to be like. So that's just absolutely incredible to me that they would have that kind of an issue. And that's extremely expensive, Wade. That's right. Four weeks of reshoots is costly. That's why this movie costs $250 million. Who would look at that poster and say, ah, yes, $250 million. I look at that poster, and you know what I think that movie should cost? $75 million. That's what I see. I see $75 million for that budget. I would never spend 200, I wouldn't even spend $100 million on that movie with that cast. Maybe on Captain Marvel 2, I would have spent $100 million. But on the Marvels, $75 million. That's, that's like Shazam level, in my opinion. And I think it will perform like Shazam 2. So bad. Uh, all right, so those are the store. Those are, that's the article, that's the thing being broke down. That's, what, that's, the, that's the bomb that Variety dropped. They were like, F it, man. Uh, so uh, it's just real bad. It's just a very bad situation. Uh, all right, so uh, let's open it up to the Q&A. You can ask me anything you'd like for 10 minutes. You know what I'm seeing tonight? Hunger Games. I'm excited. I'm very excited. I'm seeing it super early, which makes my life a lot easier. Let's see here. Q&A. I can't tweet about it until Sunday. 
So 10 minutes until, until uh, 510. <clears throat> Kish and Chip says, did you know about the bombs before Variety put this out? Well, I've been telling you a lot of this. Uh, I didn't know about Nia DaCosta walking off, you know, walking away from post. I didn't know about that. And I didn't know about the blade female centric thing. That was new. Uh, Anthony Post says, do you think losing the star of the franchise and Robert Downey Jr. irreparably hurt the MCU? Well, everybody was hating him at the end, which made me sad. Uh, I think people really liked uh, the original lineup, but you know, that, that can't go on forever. I think, I also, I also, to be honest with you, I think bringing back the original Avengers isn't going to fix anything. I think people are superheroed out. I think there's too many superhero movies and shows, and I don't think bringing them back is going to make people suddenly be like, oh yeah. And again, I don't have faith in this team to come up with the right script and director. Frog Eater, this is only Marvel questions. I'm sorry. Let's keep it with Marvel MCU stuff. Zay says, business analysis video for Hunger Games. Oh, yeah. Mm, I don't know. I, I'm really busy covering all three shows that drop tomorrow. I think I'm going to just stick to con- doing a Hunger Games review and a Hunger Games a spoiler review. And then maybe if there's like an end credit sequence. Let's see here. Oh, you want a poll on the next MCU villain? Okay, Asami, that's a good idea. Anyone can vote in a poll. You don't have to be a member to vote in a poll. Who should be the next MCU villain? You've got Kang, Doom, uh, Mr. Sinister. I almost wrote Mrs. Sinister. Mr. Sinister, or let's add uh, Magneto. Uh, I do love Magneto. Oh, what about Wanda? Yeah, I don't know. Oh yeah, Galactus is supposed to be in Fantastic Four. I mean, that's, that's such a bad idea. All right, hold on. I'm going back. I missed some questions. Here I come. All right, Julian Jr. says, Grace, do you think they could do the rogue Captain Marvel storyline now that she can maybe keep her photon powers and just take flight and, and rogue could just, just take flight and strength? I don't know. I really don't want to see Brie Larson drained by another woman on screen. I think it would just, the, the celebration in the toxic circles would just be too much. I think it would be really appalling. And I, I just, I'd be really loath to put that on screen. J.D. Gibbs, I think Deadpool 3 is somewhat safe from all this because they can make fun of it. David Kyle says Scarlett is suing AI. She's also, f- uh, oh, Scarlett Johansson suing AI? That's right. Her legal team, she's, she's a, an Avenger in real life. I love it. Uh, Present progressive, no comment on that. That's a massive spoiler. Uh, Roll the Bryce says, are you saying Agatha herself is LGBT? I cannot just defend it. I can't just outrightly spoil stuff here, man. I got, you got to read between the lines if we're going to play that game. Waffles Daddy says, what do you think of the new Marvel's X TV spot? Oh, I haven't seen it. Oh, is that where they switch spaces? I hated it. Some people were saying, oh, the camera work. And I was like, it just looks like the Babysitter's Club. I can't take it. Uh, Dobby Mommy says, does this have, uh, how, does any of this affect Bob Iger? Well, I think it affects who he might maybe fire. I think it, he would, I would be shocked if he fired Kevin Feige. But I don't know. Maybe he should insist they hire a TV executive or something. I mean, this just can't continue. It can't continue without any oversight. Jason Kelly says, will you watch the South Park episode? It's balanced, it's harsh, but it's deserved. My wife and I have gone on a Marvel Star Wars diet. Life is better. Ooh, that somewhere a little bit of Bob Iger just died, Jason Kelly. But I'm glad you and your wife are doing what you need to do. I think the South Park stuff comes with a little bit of hate in it, which makes me like shy away from it. But I do feel some of their commentary was, uh, was true. MM92 says, hi, Grace. How do you think Marvel can reunite fans overwhelmed with so many movies and series to keep up with now? I'm one of them. I think less. Less is more. You know, I'd rather have one or two really good things a year that's good. Uh, I'd rather have one long show that's excellent than like a bunch of little shows that nobody cares about. I, I think they need a break, though. Oh, thank you, Miguel. Cape and Tights says, do you think the Marvel situation is indicative of the MCU as a whole in terms of creative control? I suspect it's been the case for a long time. 
Well, I also have to say that they run out of stuff to adapt. And then they choked the comic book industry. So the comic books aren't coming up with any new good storylines. I mean, have you, can you think of any recent storyline? Even the Krakoa thing with uh, the X-Men became horrible. Can you think of any recent storyline in Marvel or DC Comics that you're like, oh, I can't wait for that to be adapted into the movies? Uh, so they have no new, they have no, the, the, the well has one dr run dry. So they have no new material coming down the pipeline. And they can't even successfully adapt what they do have. That's right, Anthony. Thank you. I said, why did they expect anything different? All new, all different Marvel was a horrible failure in the comics with the exact same toxicity that came to, that came to a head. And shocker, it's exactly what happened when they did it in the MCU. Daniel C. says, what was Marvel thinking about doing Blade so dirty? Yeah, it's shocking. If they didn't want to do Blade, they just should have said so. Danny Dunphy says, hi, Grace. Do you, well, wait a second. Uh, who just gift? Thanks for gifting a membership, Dancing Dog. Hold on, I'm going back here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I'm so far back. Hold on. I appreciate all your questions, though. Danny Dumphy says, Hey, Grace, do you think Feige is really transforming comic books into movies? You might not like a few issues, but a handful will bring you back in. I don't read as many comics these days, Danny, so no, it wouldn't work. I hope that's not what's happening. Arthur says, Grace, Ryan Coogler could adapt Doom after what he did to Namor, a king of a nation with many nuances. Although Namor has not worked, unfortunately. I don't know. Ryan Coogler can't do everything. He and Destin Daniel Cretton can't do everything. That's right, Juan Gabriel. The Rick and Morty writers are the real villains. <laughs> Steven Turner says, what should Disney do about Kevin Feige? Are we too far gone and he should be replaced? Or does he just need more supervision? You can't fire him now. I wouldn't fire him now. I think that's too aggressive. And I think it would just leave Marvel reeling. But I might insist that he hire a couple more producers to work for him and certainly a TV executive. And I'd probably say that, you know, don't announce any more movies until you finish some of these and we see how they do. That's interesting. You know, Marvel, to keep us interested, always has to be so far ahead in announcing what they're going to be working on, but then they kind of get themselves into trouble. So maybe they should stop doing that. Rodney says, hey, Grace, Phase 4 gave us so many characters and we haven't seen any of them, like Sean chi Well, you know, that really blew up in their faces with China hating uh, Simu Liu. So that became a problem, too. Uh, again, something they didn't think about. Brett says, any tea on the Fantastic Four casting? Someone was saying Jake Gyllenhaal and Matt Smith were finals for Reed. Well, as I, Brett, um, you might have missed some recent streams. I've been saying for a while that I heard that Matt Smith, don't underestimate him. Uh, and then, of course, Vanessa Kirby is uh, Sue Storm. That's what I know right now. <clears throat> Anthony Molay says, are superhero comic book movies this generation's westerns? Very popular in the day, and now no one wants to watch. I don't know. I think Gen V, tomorrow's Gen V episode is really good. But yeah, I, I think the audience is, I think streaming is also a problem because streaming has fractured all audiences. So that's created a problem as well. Frog Eater says, Disney must take a one-year MCU break and return with Deadpool 3. Ah, wouldn't that be beautiful if they did? Uh, Dancing Dog 60 says, if they make creator budget films like 80 million, maybe they can get back on track. Uh, that would be great. That would be really good if they could do that. Although, of course, the creator couldn't even make a profit with being low budget because it wasn't, uh, you know, they, I said from the very beginning, Gareth Edwards wasn't wearing his business hat. And uh, look what happened. Daniel says, focus on X-Men and Fantastic Four and pivot away from all this. And just be like, who knows what happened over there? <laughs> Maybe. I'm so glad so many of you are joining. Thank you so much for joining the stream today. It's so nice to see so many people in here. Uh, let's see here. We're usually at around three or 4,000, so this is a real party. Uh, Welm says, Thor Love and Thunder is the first movie to ever actually irritate me. It was just so dumb. My friends could see me shaking with anger watching the movie. That's pretty angry. I, I just remember after um, 
I just remember after Thor The Dark World apologizing to my non-comic book friends who I dragged along with me, being like, I'm so sorry I made you sit through that. Let me close the poll. Hold on here. All right, so who do you think should be the new villain? 43% of you are on the Doom train. I guess Kevin Feige still knows the core fan base quite well. So Doom want 43%. Uh, 28% want to see Magneto. 16% are still okay with Kang. And 10% for Mr. Sinister. But as you can see, there's really no support for Kang, which is interesting. Oh yes, if you could like the stream, as Aubrey pointed out, that would be lovely. If you could like the stream, consider a subscribe, hit the subscribe button while you're here, I'd appreciate it. Uh, uh, Jerome says, Matt Smith was amazing on Doctor Who and it would be wonderful as Reed Richards. Yeah, but he's already on House of the Dragon. I just don't know how many, how many times Matt Smith can have to come in here and save the day. Although I do like Matt Smith. Mish says, House of M is a phase around Wanda, main character. Alternate Magneto is the one who supports her. No more mutants and reset. I, I think this, I don't know, this stuff is very confusing. Early Marvel was very easy for non-comic book fans to follow. And I think they're creating a situation, um, they're creating a situation uh, where you have to have some knowledge of, of comic books to follow what's going on in the MCU. Josh says Disney just is buying Hulu. That was just announced. That's great. MC, NBC Universal just got a lot of cash to buy Warner Brothers Discovery with. Well, by Warner Brothers from Discovery. Oh, Waffles Daddy says the new ex, the new to, uh, Marvel's TV spot says don't miss what's next, and leads just an X on screen. Oh, it's that's so stupid, because it's such a small tease and not even something that people are going to be super excited about. I think that's really bad. That just reeks reeks of desperation and really is pathetic. Oh, sorry. Gamer on a Budget says, do you think Marvel ignored Carol Danvers long enough with her leaving meetings every time and having very quick cameos made people lose interest in her? No, I think people just don't like Brie Larson. I mean, she has some fans, but I think people just don't like Brie Larson. Utah Stevens says, my favorite Marvel content is beyond the trailer's cover. Ah, thanks, Utah Stevens. What a nice thing to say. Thank you. Devin Henderson says, do you think it's also the general public is just over superheroes? It is too much, for sure. But, you know, you're not going to be able to get anybody to, to, anybody to stop doing it because they all want to get in there and make their money. Alberto says, are you more excited for the Marvels or Aquaman 2? Ah, oh, I guess Aquaman 2 because I liked Aquaman, but they're both just DOA. Carlos, nothing about Moon Knight in the Variety article, I'm afraid. David Crownson says, Steven Spielberg did the same thing Nia DaCosta did and never got attacked for it. Well, he's Steven Spielberg. Did he do that early in his career? I mean, he's Steven freaking Spielberg, which buys him, you know, some goodwill. I mean, you, can, you can't do this early on in your career. Oh, Juan also put that in there with uh, Disney buying uh, $8.61 billion. Do they even have that money? That's hilarious. That's totally going to allow Universal to buy Warner Brothers. Mark my words. I'm going to tweet that right now. Hold on. There we go. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. And with this money, Universal. can now buy Warner Brothers. They do Disney, Hulu, Circle of Life, <laughs> Circle of Hollywood. Circle of Hollywood. There we go, baby. I had to post it now. Okay. Oh, I don't want to, Mooma, I don't want to see a bunch of big bugs. That's what the brood are. Lord Baratheon says, on what you know about Cap 4, do you think it's good and will be well received? I think it all depends on the visual effects and how many hulks there are. 
Cat Shack, that's funny. You need to send the MCU through the loom and bundle it into one streamlined timeline. I agree. Okay, has it been 10 minutes? I think it's been more than 10 minutes because I love talking to you guys. Mike says, are you really surprised that no one is talking about Loki? Nothing really noteworthy has happened so far, plus Loki himself has been very uninteresting. I've been fascinated by Loki. I am surprised that no one's talking about it. It's really bad. I think Thursday night was a bad night. I think two, because football, football has really killed it. Film Fanatic says, Grace, which current MCU characters would you cut to slim down the roster? Uh, I'm not answering that. That's a trap right there. Okay. And Jesse the Good Witch says, how would you fix this, Grace? A break. I would take a break, and I would really change who they were hiring as writers. All right. I think I better get going now. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for joining today's live stream. I hope you had a good time. This was quite the discussion. Uh, I think we did a, a good job breaking it down. Uh, and we'll see what comes out of this. Uh, I'll be going live one more day this week. It'll either be tomorrow or Friday. I have a super secret fun thing I'm going to tomorrow morning, so I'm very excited about it. And I'm going to try and react to the Apes trailer. Uh, I think it's going to drop at noon tomorrow, so the new Planet of the Apes trailer. I'm going to try and uh, react there. All right, everybody, bye. Bye, 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 bye.